everyone, it's John Glynn and I'm here today on Photoshop Elements 20 having a look at the tools in the toolbox which come under the sponge tool. Sponge tool and other tools within that little group. The sponge tool and if we go down below your photo at the bottom of your monitor there will be a, a dodge tool and also a burn tool. Okay, so I'm going to have to look at those three. Again, these work specifically on a layer. They have to be on a, an actual photograph. So I would advise duplicating your background layer. So go to your background layer in the layers panel on the right hand side of your monitor. Click the right, um, click your right mouse key and just click duplicate layer. I'm using a PC by the way and just with a mouse because that's what most people have. And um, and I'm going to be looking at the sponge tool to start with. So sponge tools, the basic sponge tool is going to be either desaturate or saturate. Okay, desaturating color, very simply, and I'll put it over, I'm going to zoom in to help see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to zoom in on the boat. So I'll control plus allows me to zoom in quickly. And, uh, and I'll bring up window, and I'm going to bring up uh, navigator. And that just helps me to move across. There we are quite simply quite quickly and um, now uh, in navigator um, if I desaturate um, at 50% you'll notice that the the color of my boat becomes less strong okay if you desaturate color you're removing color and eventually if you desaturate enough it will just become gray Okay, so you can remove the colour of something if you desaturate. And it's on 50% as standard. Um, if you put it on faster than that higher rate, it will work much more quickly. And you'll desaturate much more quickly, but you have less control. So the general rule of thumb, uh, I'm going to go to history, which is within the same group as navigator, and undo sponge tool. Say OK. Um, the general rule of thumb is to do the flow much, much less. So you would work at a very, very much reduced rate of reduction. And that way it gives you control over how much of a colour you take out. All I'm doing is moving my mouse over over the boat, over this bit of the boat, which is the, the engine bit because it's the strongest orange bit. Um, and I can click as well with the left mouse key and that sort of helps to speed the process up. Um, and each time I do that you'll notice in my history palette <coughs> it adds an extra action. So sponge tool, sponge tool, sponge tool because I've done it three times and I'm doing it again, so on. So each time you click you get a new action and that will just take out the colour. Okay, if you're going to desaturate, let's undo all of that, delete. It's less with the left and right mouse keys I'm using. And this time I'm going to saturate. I'll put it back to 50 odd percent and see how quickly it works. Saturation colour, you're making a colour stronger. Okay, you're making oranges oranger, reds redder, blues bluer. So basically, if you're saturating colours, you're making the colours more dominant. It can be quite useful in uh, nature if you're going to do flowers things like that it can look over the top so you do have to be a little bit careful otherwise it can look like you've sort of it can look more like a, a drawing or painting rather than a, um, a photograph but it's something you'd have to just practice on your own and decide how much extra color you want in a picture it certainly would work in this sort of picture with the red boat so saturating might be useful again we'd normally advise to do it at a lower resolution, lower flow, lower flow than 50%, you'd normally do it at around again uh, 10 or less even percent. So that you just build it up slowly and then get to the level you want. And if you take it slightly beyond, it doesn't matter because you can, you're in control of the situation and you're not rushing it. So we'd advise you to do these quite slow. Um, I'm using a, um, I'm just going to delete that again. I'm using um, a, a soft edge brush so it blends in the effect into the background so it's not too obvious. A sharp edge brush may look like you've got a, an edge, a sharp edgedness, which would make it more obvious that you've been working on it. So generally speaking, we would use soft edged brushes. 
Okay, next one. Uh, the dodge tool. Dodge tools um, are a traditional term used in in a dark room. It means making something lighter, or or not actually making it lighter, but stopping it going darker is probably a better way of saying in the dark room. However, in our case, we are making things lighter. So again, it's at fifty percent for the exposure. They call it exposure rather than flow, um, and you can see that it makes things lighter. Okay. So the dodge tool is making it lighter. Um, again, we wouldn't normally do it at 50%. We would do it at a much lower exposure rate. Um, so that, I'll remove that one, delete. Yes, take it away. We would build it up slowly and means then that we are in control, in control of the actual amount of of lightness we're going to we're going to keep in the picture and where it would be um, it means that we're less likely to make mistakes or rushing it so again it's just trying out it works on mid-tones uh, you've got shadows so if there's a shadow it will work more on the shadows than the highlights um, if you got highlights it should work on the highlights more than anything else okay so it's just a matter of trying them out so the highlight would be white things so it doesn't affect the shadows so much while if I put it to mid to shadows then it will work on the shadows more and it shouldn't in theory work on the highlights okay um, and mid tones are pretty much everything equally okay so it's a matter of trying it out and seeing what you you try you you find from it uh, as I say do do it at a low exposure and then you can be in control of the whole process. If you do it really quickly, um, you can end up making mistakes. I'll remove those, delete all that, say OK. Remember, you are actually working on your picture, but I've made a duplicate background, so I'm not damaging the original. And I've also got the burn tool. The burn tool is going to make an area of the picture darker. OK, so if there's something in the picture you feel should be darker, then you would use the burn tool. And the burn tool, um, as you can see, can make things dark very, very quickly. This is only at 45%, and it's working really, really fast. All I'm doing is holding the left mouse key down on my PC and moving my mouse around, and it's working really, really quickly. So again, you wouldn't necessarily want it to be that dramatic. Uh, you might want to have it much, much lower so that you are in control of the process and maybe even 14% may be a bit too big and it may well be right the way down so that then when you start burning things in or darkening them as the term would now be uh, it would make you're in control of it and you're doing it bit by bit if you take it too far just go to your history palette go to the, fi the last one you don't have to do undo them all as I've been doing you can just go to the last um, action click the right mouse key and say delete and say yes and it will take it back a stage it's a little bit like doing the undo 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 but maybe again by using the history uh, palette you have more control because you can actually see what you've been doing and if I do lots of them um, I'll whack it up and just show you as well on this if I do lots of them dark and dark and dark each time I click you'll notice the history palettes adding to its to what I've been doing I can actually just click back one at a time just get an idea or jump back and get an idea what I did right at the beginning or what I've done here and so on you can actually jump around to see how and you can get an idea of what you've been up to it's quite a good tool to have um, the history it's the history panel okay so it's worth getting used to that as well while you're playing with these things just so that you get an understanding of how it's working and what you're doing uh, everything you do in Photoshop has been recorded basically this is not saved however if you file if you close this program down and save it when you come back tomorrow all this will be empty your you may have your layers because you kept them but you won't have the history will be back to zero um, the other thing is the harsh brush I'm just going to take out quite a lot of what I've done here 
and just go to harden soft brushes. I've been using soft brushes throughout, but the hard brush, um, if I use that one and a slightly bigger brush, you can maybe get an idea of why we would use soft brushes. A hard edge brush um, will give a definite sort of line. I'm trying to make it so it's obvious that there's a line. Uh, while a soft edge brush should bleed and you can see a difference just by even using it. It's it, You don't get such a harsh sort of line to it. It does soften it and blend it in better. So if you're going to use any brushes we tend to advise people to use a soft brush rather than a, 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 a hard edge brush. And that goes for any of these um, tools with a dodge tool, the, um, the sponge tool and, and so on. So it, usually soft edge brushes are the best ones to use. But do have a go at using them all because then you'll get an understanding of what they're doing. Okay, uh, that's the three little tools in here. Um, do what I did, which was make a background copy, you're not re uh, destroying your original picture, and usually where you're using these sort of exposures and flows and everything really low, but do do them bigger so that you can get a feel for them and understand how quick they can make changes to your picture and, uh, and how low you need to go so that you stay in control. Okay, thanks for watching.